Welcome to the Visionary Chronicles, a business strategy podcast where we provide insight to those looking for creative, executable strategies built around the latest disruptive ideas, innovative cultures, product creators, and marketing solutions. As we continue with the Visionary Chronicles, one area I thought would be very interesting and not a lot of the either blogs or podcasts really cover any of this is in regards to brands, just kind of looking at the origin of these great brands, these generational brands, and how they've been able to sustain their success is one thing. But what are the origins of the brand? How did they start? What are the things that were pieces of the puzzle that these founders were looking at, these great innovators, these great visionaries? What was the foundation of their brand and their company that allowed them to sustain their success and not give up when the going got tough? It may seem a little cliche-ish, but this is really what a lot of these brands went through are similar to those that I talk with each day in brands that they're looking to build, either wanting to be a brand, how does a brand start, what do I need to do? in order to grow my company and have it respected within my category and be a leader. What you'll find with a lot of these brands, in this case today, I'll give you a little bit of a background on what I call Brand Chronicle. And today we'll talk about Nike. You know, what are the origins of the Shoe Dogs? I've actually read Shoe Dog. I thought it was a great book. Uh, Give me a lot of insight into you think a brand that is perfect out of the gate one that didn't face any obstacles and one that just cruised along for the last 40 to 50 years. But giving you some insight into how these brands start and also some of the areas where you're probably facing the same thing that these brands faced and don't think that these brands are perfect. Um, Certainly when you look at them today and they've had generational success, you certainly look at it that way. But what I want to do in this series, and again, I'll do this probably every three to four weeks, and this also was one that was recommended to me by one of our listeners, so I'll also reach out and ask you for any brands or or any input you may have in regards to questions, as well as what we call our brand chronicle. So with the shoe dog and the origins, what I call the origins of the shoe dogs, what you'll find out is that Nike went through a lot of obstacles in the very beginning. Phil Knight, back in 1963, the origins of Nike, borrowed $50. $50 to start this great brand. And what you'll find is brands that have sustained a long period of success usually have a visionary at the top that started with nothing. There are brands, and I'm not saying there aren't those brands, that started with something and built something greater. But what you'll find more often than not are brands that start with nothing and go through a sustained period of ups and downs in a sustained period of where they felt they wouldn't be able to carry on. And that was the case with Nike. Phil Knight borrowed that $50 back in 1963 at age 24. And his strategy was not to build his own brand. At the time, he actually had a distribution agreement with a high-quality, low-cost shoe brand out of Japan. And originally, Nike was called Blue Ribbon Sports. And it only was because of the disruption in his relationship with his distributor in Japan that we're able to see a brand we call Nike today. Phil Knight partnered with Bill Bowerman, who was the head coach at the University of Oregon back in 1964. And they founded Blue Ribbon Sports, which would later then become Nike. At the time in 1964, knowing that he didn't have any type of platform to launch off of, but a great product that was second to none and was the best performing product for track stars. With a powerful combination of having the probably most prestigious track coach in the country, Bill Bowerman 
Phil Knight at the University of Oregon, where he was enrolled or had graduated from, had a platform to authenticate his product before he distributed it. And I mention that because every great brand has had an authentication platform for ensuring that when their products eventually do hit the market, they have been tested over and over again by the greatest athletes in the world. Now, not every brand is going to have access to these types of athletes or these types of coaches. It just happened to be that Phil knew that in order for him to be authentic and grow to the next level, he needed to position this brand as best in class. And you'll find in almost every instance with brands, when they start out, they build the foundation off of best in class and they stick to that foundation. They don't compromise their vision in order to get additional sales or move into a channel where they lose brand equity. They will stick to their principles and their vision that they had from the very outset of the foundation of the brand. So when you look at Nike, the progression of where Phil went, partnering with Bill Bowerman, finding Blue Ribbon Sports in 1964, in their first year, which is ironic and hard to believe, they had $8,000 in sales. Today translates to $30 billion in sales on a global level with Nike as a brand. That's an incredible growth over a period of time, but not without its valleys and its peaks as most brands go through. And I like talking about this because you're probably in a similar situation and or have been through a similar situation as you've been building your brand. So when you're starting out with nothing, you inherently are an entrepreneur. Now, many times people put that entrepreneur tag on people that don't have much risk, plenty of money, and can make mistakes without having any adverse effect on the future of their company. Entrepreneurs are people who start with nothing and make something from nothing. This is the case with Nike. He started with nothing and joined up with a team of shoe dogs, that understood his vision for the future and where they were taking Nike as a brand. So in 1964, when he joined with Bill Bowerman, had $8,000 in the first year of sales, they also partnered up with Steve Prefontaine. This was a great relationship for authenticating the product in partnership with Bowerman, who was their visionary on the product side, understanding what you needed to build into a product and commercialize in order for it to be best in class. So this happened to be a very powerful partnership that lent itself to authenticating the product, but also legitimizing the Nike brand. This is one thing that you'll find with most brands or every brand is that authenticating the product through those that can test it for you and those that will stand by your product and ensure that when your retail distribution channel, your customer, your loyal community sees who's backing that brand and wearing that product are also best in class. This is a challenging environment to commercialize product in, but one where you need to ensure that you've got a seamless execution of your product commercialization platform and you have a vision for the future which allows you to be a leader in your class. So when you're building your brand, building your product, you're gonna have a lot of product testing which through Blue Ribbon Sports and Nike, Bowerman, as much vision as he had, had a lot of failures, but when you have testing, updates, failures, eventually, eventually, you will get a hero product that is successful that you can launch the brand off of. In this case, it was the Waffle Racer, which was the great product Steve Prefontaine wore and wore again, threw away, complained about, but eventually perfected 
and was the first product that was really a commercially viable product for Nike that allowed him to launch the brand from. So now Phil Knight, Bill Bowerman, and his team of shoe dogs now have a platform to launch off of. And as with other brands, and I'm sure with yours as well, having a platform to launch from is of critical importance. Most people think when they're starting their brands that they need to position themselves, have a, brand, a product out of the gate, have it authenticated. But each one of these steps is a progression in the development of your brand. Understand that having that vision first and foremost is key. Phil Knight had a vision of what Nike was going to be and how he's gonna sustain that success. So it's critical that when you are building your brand at the very outset, you've got a vision, a positioning, a foundation, a culture, and a lifestyle that you're going to sell when you commercialize that product success. So from 1964 through 2019, from $50, they are able to grow this brand, Nike, to $30 billion. Now over that period of time, what you've seen Nike do is move from track to many different sports, successfully authenticating their brand first and foremost. The other thing you'll see with Nike, which they did successfully, as they grew their brand, they authenticated themselves first before they entered a market. That is first and foremost through product authenticated by high-performing athletes in each segment of the sport and then marketing that product to the community of the brand. Nike's done that successfully across football, soccer, baseball, volleyball, you name the sport. Nike, in each one of these steps along the way, has authenticated themselves first because they knew in order for them to be respected in their specific sport, they needed to be authenticated first. So having a great product is your first step. You can never market an inferior product knowing you're going to be a premium brand. Now there are several brands you're very familiar with that have made this misstep and it's cost them loyalty with their community and loyalty with their retailers. When you put an inferior product against a brand that's trying to position themselves as premium, there's a disconnect on the marketing, the authentication, and as a result, both brand equity and consumer loyalty are degraded. And those are two areas in the world we live in today that you don't wanna have to try and rebuild. So have all of these pieces of the puzzle in the place prior to commercializing your product and you will have a successful launch, a successful long-term strategy, and an ongoing vision that's never compromised. So what you'll see with Nike as they started in the very beginning, Phil's Knight Foundation and his vision with Bill Bowerman was always to be best in class. Now this didn't or was not meant to be specific to track. They knew they had an opportunity in multiple sports, but they knew they had to go through the trial and error period in order for them to be considered and classified as best in class. And having that partnership with Bill Bowerman and Steve Prefontaine in the very beginning was a key and integral part to growing, building, and successfully building this legacy of Nike from 1964 to today. And as part of that puzzle, Phil also knew he needed partnership with those shoe dogs, a team that stuck to the vision, was loyal to the plan, and knew what the objective was for the brand long term. So having a great product, a great product visionary, a partner in athletes, that can authenticate the product and communicate that to your communities is also a critical piece to your success. So stick with your foundation, authenticate your product, have a pursuit of perfection, and just do it.
This was a campaign that Nike land launched and has built one of the greatest brands on the planet and continues to grow year after year. And if you follow these principles of Nike, know that out of the gate, these brands, as you have, are challenged with defining who they are, finding a product that is going to be successful in the marketplace, you too will be successful, but not without challenges. Understand every brand from Nike to Apple to Adidas, all of these brands have had challenges and have come through the back end because of what they stuck to in the very beginning. As soon as you start compromising your principles, compromising your positioning, you are going to fail. So a word of caution is stick to who you are, understand where you're playing, authenticate yourself, and be loyal to your community. Thank you for listening to the Visionary Chronicles, a weekly business strategy podcast where we provide insight to those looking for creative, executable strategies built around the latest disruptive ideas, innovative cultures, product creators, and marketing solutions.